Hello, Isabel. Welcome. Hello. And this is Emre from Istanbul Fringe team. I'm the artistic director of Fringe Festival. And we have Noyan and Melike with us today from House Bune. They are both theater academics in Istanbul and they have a great YouTube channel, House Bune. Uh, you can subscribe. <laughs> uh, and this is Isabel from uh, Beckstein House Products Production. <laughs> uh, and they will be in Istanbul Fringe Festival 2020 online with their show Wolfgang. So I will leave you with Noyan and Melike. They have some questions for you. Hello, Isabel. Hi. Uh, I know uh, Wolfgang is not a new play, but uh, I still want to uh, say congratulations to you. Uh, it's my favorite piece in the festival, uh, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it's the uh, headliner of this year. Yeah. for me at least. Uh, but uh, before we talk about the play, let's start with your uh, company's background. Uh, Backstein House Production is a dance theater company based on Stuttgart. Uh, since when you have been working together, uh, could you please uh, give us a little history of... Yes. Oh, no. You're I stuck. Think... Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I hear. <laughs> okay, ah, now you're back. Okay, so okay. Um, I've been working with uh, Nikki and Heiko together. I think for over ten years. Mm -hmm. um, I was studying with Nikki in Holland together, uh, but she um, left the school before me, and she went to Stuttgart to um, make choreographies. And then uh, I was first in Brussels working as a dancer and. Then uh, she asked me to come and then I stayed. And since that we are working together and then for each production we are um, inviting, depending on how many people we need on stage, depending on the themes, we ask um, artists to come and work with us, M musicians, dancers, stage designers, whatever. And then actually I have to say also we started, I mean, like everybody, we started always with small project fundings and then slowly uh, we got more and more established here in Stuttgart and then now we have a very nice funding from the city which is like a it's a huge privilege that we feel that we can work I would say a bit more structured or at least uh, I don't know have our dancers come regularly so this is really nice okay <clears throat> thank you so Isabel, Wolfgang is a really, really amused me, if you ask me, and uh, it has a strong but simple narrative. Uh, but most of the important one is uh, it has a strong metaphor at the center. Uh, you know, in all, all powerful modernist works like Kafka's and in theater, you know, in all uh, strong absurdist play, plays like Ionesco's, for, for example, there is always a strong metaphor at the center and the absurdity, the uncanny spread around from this central metaphor. Mm -hmm. So uh, your metaphor is uh, wolf, being wolf. Mm -hmm. And you are doing the same actually, but you are doing this with a realistic aesthetic. So mm -hmm. you do not create a plastic symbolic a setting there are no unusual elements on stage so let's start with your this uh, absurdist aesthetic if you mm -hmm. wish yeah uh, I can tell you a little bit how I mean we are working process orientated so I mean Nikki has all these ideas for example um, she read this book about a scientist that, uh, as I said in Instagram that said uh, wolves are the better humans mm -hmm. and we were playing with the idea of a four feet position so as a physical theme, we had the four feet position and we had this idea about the wolves. And then we, we meet in the rehearsal space and we try everything. Mm -hmm. And so, and one day we said, okay, let's try to reenact wolves. Like, what is it? It's because we thought like, maybe it's a stupid idea <laughs> like this, but then we tried it and it was really, I don't know, we tried it a couple of times. And also we as a dancers, we really started liking it. I mean, for sure the knees hurt after a while and all this. But we thought, okay, what if the wolf is not like this wild, we always think it's a hunter, it's a wild animal, but actually during the day, they hang out in the woods, no? <laughs> so <laughs> we started to hang out in four feet in the rehearsal space. And then we thought like, actually, it's very peaceful. It's very, you become a pack, you, you care for each other, maybe somebody is a bit slower, so you check with them, no? 
then you play a bit around, then you lie. So, um, and and then from there out, for sure, we we made it bigger. So what what happens when the human comes into play? No, in that case, in our case, the public. So they are in this on stage there on our in our space. So we play a lot with this. In I mean, in all the pieces, we play a lot with the fact like what who is the public in the in the theater? What role do they play? And how we can integrate it in the themes that we work on. I hope that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the other hand, uh, you know, it has a really strong political tone as well. Uh, living together in peace, uh, master, yeah. sl master and slave relationship, uh, considering the human, human being himself or herself at the center of the world, uh, yeah. the absurdity of the human condition, and being refugees, being and migra migration in Europe, especially, lots of things are underlined. So maybe do you want to talk about this political tone in light of the wolf metaphor and the story, obviously? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was uh, funny. It's always like on the moment that you go into a theme, you read everywhere <laughs> about it, no? So in the same time, we started to read about wolves. There were actually the wolves coming back to Germany on the borders. And there was a huge discussion like, uh, and still is like, can we shoot them? Can we not shoot them? They're eating the sheep. Like the farmers are really sad and angry about it. And there's the uh, people to take care. And in the same time, like I think one year before, there was one politician from a right-wing party here in, in Germany. And she said this like really stupid sentence that uh, she thinks it's okay that if uh, too many refugees come, people should shoot at the borders, no? So then for sure, th this whole thing became very political, no? And we, uh, I mean, it's something, it's real, no? It's not, and now again, it becomes very real. It will always be something that the human beings, in, in order to protect them, like it's, they kill. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, no? There's no attempt to, yeah, to live in peace, like, Mm -hmm. So uh, we are, and we also we don't have answers, no. We don't have the perfect answers. Just try, at least try to 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 share the the land, the territory, no. There's no. Um, it it doesn't belong to anyone, in a, in effect, no. Not to the humans, not to the wolves. It's something we should uh, try to live there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And this is, yeah, also why, maybe, sorry, again, why in the end we, we I mean, there's this end where we come up naked, you no, know, like really being, also the humans, and then Heiko singing, humans are strangers. Because yeah. we are super, we are, we are ambivalent in this thing, no? I think. Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about the identities part, maybe. Uh, the play starts with the pull of uh, different ethnic identities, uh, but in time, when we deeper uh, about their origins, everybody gets equal. Uh, they undress their nationalities uh, and get mm -hmm. rid of their culture and become wild wolves. Uh, mm -hmm. In this point, national identities uh, looks like a curtain, which disguise mm -hmm. the fact who we really are. Mm -hmm. uh, I find this point of view very pure and honest, uh, and political, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, as far as I can follow, in Germany, uh, future and immigration are most popular topics, uh, both in uh, politics and theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to ask your uh, personal uh, future predictions about national borders, immigrations, and refugee uh, problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it, it was a big one. <laughs> Just for me to understand, you, you want to know like in the further, in the future productions? Yeah, yeah, in the future. Yeah. So your predictions. Uh, ah, for, your predi your yeah. predictions. Yeah, <laughs> both in the productions and in my prediction. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to say because the, um, there's a lot of things I don't understand actually in this, like, because for example, like now we have this uh, uh, refugee camps in Moria and in the Greek islands. Hmm. And uh, Germany is very slow in taking people in, even though there, I, I just read an article, there's cities in Germany that say like, we have capacity, we have space, we can take people. But because there's a European politics saying like, hmm, but then we are the only ones taking people, so we cannot, and I don't understand it. 
Like I, I literally, I don't understand why. Because then they're afraid that there are more refugees are coming. But then I also think like, yeah, <laughs> it's. Um, so I hope they, they, they find a solution actually, you know, like, I mean, in art worlds, I have a lot, um, we're trying to have colleagues that make uh, programs to like, to collect money or to collect things to send to the refugee camps and stuff. But in the end, like to make a big, big change, it's the politics, no? And especially when there are cities that actually say like, we can take the people and they're not doing it. And because they're not allowed to, no, it's, it's very contradiction and I, I really don't get it. and I also don't get it why why Europe is so slow with this I mean it's we are a very wealthy state no I think there's space there is stuff and there is another problem uh, who are you gonna take yes you can take okay, people too. but uh, who are you going to take yeah but I think then then also I always think like I mean there's I mean how many million people live in Germany and then 13,000 persons it's actually not so much I mean, it's more the question like, how do you distribute them? Because I mean, most of the time, I also don't think, yeah, you can just take them and put them somewhere because normally, lots of times they have family also in different cities. I, for sure, it's a big logistic work now, but I think, yeah, I don't understand why they're not doing it. <laughs> it's a topic I don't. Yeah, I think then uh, there's a, a, a lot, lots of uh, um, lots of ignorance in, in fact, no, to, to not try to help. No. Okay. Okay. Actually, performance is not only focused on being refugees and being households. So yeah. being human or being wolf, uh, it is focused on being the audience uh, yeah. as well. So the performance venue is, considered the whole the whole world that everybody has lived together or simply saying as home uh, thinking from this perspective uh, I would like to ask uh, about the spectators position so because mm -hmm. here spectators obligation is not limited to sit and watch the play uh, starting from the beginning uh, they are inside of the play and the mm -hmm. performance also inside of them uh, they are physically moving during the performance just like the stage because the stage itself is changing a couple of times uh, during the play mm -hmm. so uh, it seems that you are playing with the uh, borders of giving definitions of theater and dance in mm -hmm. many aspects but um, considering with the spectators condition what will you say um, mm -hmm. so the, um, the spectator in our um, pieces it's always it has a role most of the times we're trying to find something in between uh, being relaxed and just being able to watch the play, but also having to participate, no? Because sometimes I think if, for example, if I'm in the audience and I have to participate a piece, sometimes I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to go on stage, no? But no, I know. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. So what we are trying to do is like, we invite them, for example, when the audience enters, they, they are, they're going on to a table, no? It's just five persons. And then I'm saying like, hello, I'm Isabel, I'm your personal performer. So I invite them to, to look at me. So I make them feel comfortable, which makes it even maybe more weird if later I come and I ask like, can I please take your chair? And because I invite them before they say yes, <laughs> then I take the chair and I take it away, you know? <laughs> it's this, and then I think you open, up a, you open up a border inside, like the border of being just a spectator because you have to participate. And normally people do it, no? Nobody says no. And then, uh, but then they also, after they are like back in their space and they think like, ah, it just took my space. <laughs> no, so mm, I think it's a very fine line, but it makes a bigger experience out of it. No, and it makes you also reflect on, okay, I'm a spectator. Um, I'm watching other human beings. They want to show me something, but so it layers up. It gives it more, more layers, more deepness, I would say. Okay. Uh, when we see a uh, performance so wild uh, in the stage, we also uh, see how civil we are uh, mm -hmm. as audience. 
Uh, and with, when these two manners come together, uh, we feel that uh, acting wild uh, is far more natural than acting civilized. <laughs> Uh, like uh, taming our inner beast yeah. uh, uh, yeah. is an unspoken uh, comment contract, of course. Uh, we think in this way we can restrain violence, uh, but in the end it's not working, of course. Uh, yeah. Domesticated civilians are uh, far more dangerous and capable of uh, doing horrible things. Yeah. Uh, maybe we need to be more wild to uh, stop this violence. Uh, what do you think about the relationship between wildness and violence? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's an interesting one <laughs> because I mean it's something we we also discussed. No, actually, there's out of the performance we made a solo for one of the dancers that he has this like wolf solo in the end mm -hmm. uh, where we exactly discuss that. No, it's called um, I think it's called Humans Are Strangers. So yeah, it's this thing. There's and, and then also because. It, it's about being left alone or being left in peace. I mean, this is also what this, uh, the scientist said about the uh, wolves. She said, like, they get more wild when you fence them. When you put them in a fence, they feel like a permanent emergency situation. So what they do is they start to make a hierarchy in their pack to control. Like, let's say, I mean, let's say dictatorship or something to have the control of this weird situation. But when they are free, they, I mean, they hunt, but they, they're in, inside the pack, they don't have such a strong hierarchy because then there is, there's more group uh, responsibility. So I think it's both. I wouldn't say that necessarily wildness is, um, wildness helps to not be violent, but I would say freedom helps to not be violent. And if your freedom is being wild, then <laughs> yes, no. that's helpful. Clever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so maybe let uh, we can talk about music a little mm -hmm. bit um, because music has a very vital place in uh, this performance, mm -hmm. and it's also lively performed. And and in the end, the picture that given with the you know that song uh, by amazing Michelle Gurevich, China woman, yeah. namely, lovers are strange, lovers are strange, but you change the topic yeah. of human, or yeah. humans, yeah. anyway. So it is so striking and very, impless, uh, very impressive closure. So yeah. maybe you can talk about, uh, you can tell about the music part of your company. Yeah, absolutely. This, if, because for us as dancers, it's, amazing to have live music on stage uh -huh. and then especially Heiko because he's so used to to work with us and also to perform with us that he he knows I mean even in the rehearsals we work together no we improvise he goes with us and then uh, it's it's very helpful to find the inside of the atmospheres and uh, especially for this performance it was it was a lot of fun for I mean fun for us because on one point we decided to have this truck on stage or like in the public. And then uh, we, okay, we have to do something with it now. And then we decided that Heiko is Wolfgang and he has to sit in the truck. And then he said like, yeah, actually maybe I can make music with it. So we started with the mics on the truck and then he, he thought the nicest sound is when he does like this. So while we were dancing and sweating and getting crazy, he was also dancing and sweating and getting crazy. And then he's like, that, uh, muscle, muscle in ache in my arms and stuff. So it was nice and it, it helps to push, no? Because sometimes you, I mean, after, if you do it like uh, for the third performance, when you're really tired, you need this kind of push and we help each other in this. So uh, that is really nice. So he yeah. is working like a maestro to you. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, also for the choir in the beginning, uh -huh. it was... Uh, we, uh, we couldn't see every uh, moment of uh, Wolfgang uh, on the DJ cabin, <laughs> so yeah. uh, we missed most of the parts because of the video. Yeah, uh, yeah. I hope, I hope uh, we, we can see in the future uh, your live performance, maybe. Uh, yeah, actually uh, we changed uh, in the... Um, when we had a guest play, we, we thought, ah, it's really actually a pity that Heiko is sitting behind the audience all the time. So now in the new version, we put the truck on stage. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Also because it was too loud <laughs> that the people that were sitting right in front of me was like, oh. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so, so now he's on stage with us. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's only possible if you have enough space on the on the stage. But uh, we liked that a bit more for him also better to see us and mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, as a dancer, uh, I want to ask you something. Uh, the choreography and the dancer's way of moving uh, are very sharp and aggressive. Uh, you are moving uh, like a shapeshifter between wolf and human, uh, like a werewolf maybe. <laughs> uh, so so uh, can you please tell about your working process? Uh, how did you reach this balance? Uh, how did you work? with the choreographer and the dancers? Um, I mean, in this, uh, in this piece, or we had a roll of pieces, a row of pieces where the idea was to go from, um, from a physical principle into a theme. So the physical principle of four feet position was there already. And then the theme, especially because of the wildness or of the clinch between a wolf and human, it made us do this kind of movement, no? Like, uh, we started with the idea, ah, but it has to be strong. It has to be like, pack, pack, pack. <laughs> this is how we usually work. And I mean, then most of the times before we start working, we send some ideas to the dancers. So they also <laughs> have a picture in their like head when they arrive. And then we, uh, then we start with this piece, we started creating quite quickly. So sometimes we do some improvs, but there we said, ah, maybe let's cr create directly with the facts changing between four feet and standing, changing between the idea of being a human and being a wolf and what, how does it feel, no? And then each dancer creates what they think about it and then we mix it up, then we change it to, to the themes that we need in certain ways. And then there was also Stevie who does this solo in the end that he is almost like a wolf, no? <laughs> and then it's also nice to, to push for this, no, and to find individual movement qualities uh -huh. in it. Yeah, I think this is okay. The last question. <coughs> no, Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Yeah, you can ask. I can ask. What, what is the last question? I don't know. I, I think we are finished. <laughs> Do we have a last question? Online Fringe Festival. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, my chair yeah. makes noises, I have to... Okay, yeah. you know, Istanbul Fringe is online uh, streaming this year. So what do you feel about watching online uh, performances? Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's why I... It's hard because I'm really such a big fan of seeing live stuff, no? Normally, mm -hmm. I even like it to be in a small theater, so to be very close. It's like yeah. 100 people, I think, is enough to... Because... So, um, with the honor, I think it's very important that it's happening. I think it's very important that it's possible to still see stuff. It's also, it has an advantage. I can do it at home in my bed, in my pajamas. <laughs> also nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I literally, especially with dance, I miss the, the sweat. I miss the, um, for, for example, uh, just before the corona started, I saw a piece of a colleague and they were moving very, very slow. And I thought it was really beautiful. But I thought if I have to watch this on video, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> so I, I like that I, it's nice to get an impression. It's, it's important. So sometimes I can watch and, uh, but I, I, I miss the live stuff. So <laughs> it's the, yeah. I like it, but I like life more. Let's yeah. say. <laughs> Yeah. Are, yeah are you you understand what is it about and the aesthetic maybe you can understand this but it's not the same yeah, yeah, yeah. are you in stuttgart now or yes i'm in stuttgart and, now we are working are already on the next are you performing in stuttgart uh, how is the situation of theaters in there um it's okay they're coming back they had they have to hand in a hygienic concepts which mm -hmm. they do so mm -hmm. it's like maybe 20 30 percent of the public mm -hmm. um for us, not so not such a big thing because we anyways always narrow the public. <laughs> but uh, I mean, and because we have a good, uh, the situation is not too bad. Let's say if I can say that. I mean, the um, the entrance fees are missing, but then there's also big solidarity. So people also pay, and then there we have uh, state funding for the theaters, no, which until now they still give it. So we continue 
uh, little by little. The only thing is like, for example, now we had, uh, we are working on a production, which was supposed to be a big piece, again, with five dancers, lots of the dancers from Wolfgang. And now we decided to make a, a smaller production, a solo with me on stage, Heiko, they, and the others appear on video. So they come to work with us now, always for two weeks. So we're not 10 people in the rehearsal space. We try, no? We, as I always think, like, oh, we had worse situations <laughs> actually for us. <laughs> but was, we always find ways. I think this is the um, important thing. Okay. Thank you very much. I, uh, I hope you. to see you uh, next in this next year's uh, alive yeah. uh, on the stage. Yeah. Hey, I, I also have a question to you. <laughs> no, no. Because it's, how your YouTube channel has a German name, no? House Bühne? House yeah. I, <laughs> I know that you can ask me. <laughs> it's a long story. Uh, maybe Noyan can ask it because. Uh, uh, Let, let's say we are a fan of uh, a specialty uh, German theater. Uh, yeah. So we put that name. Uh, yeah. Like Schaubühne or. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. That's why. Okay, I, I liked it because, I mean, we are also called Bakshan House Production. Yeah. Because oh, the yeah. idea is to give a, a house, like a <laughs> space for people to make art inside, no? The name comes from, uh, we are uh, shooting the video in my house. So uh, yeah. we are talking about, uh, the critics are, uh, we are talking about always on the house. So, yeah. uh, and we are talking about the Bühne. And yeah. The name is House Bühne. It's, it's yeah. a very simple uh, answer, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I understand. We are talking okay. in house about theater. That's all. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you. And I also would like to tell you that this is one of my favorite performances in the whole list, and I really appreciate your work, like as dancers, singers, musicians, actors, and welcomers on the stage. So it's really i think you're very present thank and you, very much. you handle a lot of different time. disciplines yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i will give you online applause yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you for the interview very nice thank, thank you, very you very much and say hi to all the team okay. and hope to see you maybe next year in a physical edition of the festival i hope so too <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you Bye-bye.